Hey, it's Coach with Tactical Hive. I'm not on the range today, but I want to talk to you about a, a bolt bag. These days, you know, you never know what's going to happen. There's always a good, uh, good chance that uh, something bad might happen. You know, and it's always been this way. It just, you know, it's getting more to the front of your mind lately. So guys have been asking me like, hey, you know, what are you going to carry? Well, I've got my own EDC stuff, okay, that I'm always going to have on me. But if I need something more, this is what's going to go in my car, okay? So I, this is my getting, getting home or getting out of a situation setup, okay? And again, this is set up for me and my particular environment. Uh, here in Southern California, don't have to worry too much about, uh, you know, winter snaps and things like that. Um, in your own environment, you're going to have to deal with things as they yeah, whatever makes sense. But you don't want to be carrying just a crap load of stuff. You want to be as minimal as you possibly can. But before getting into the details, I want to mention that today's video is brought to you by Vetter Holsters. Tactile Hive, we use them in Force on Force classes. They make a good, solid, everyday carry holster. If you want to pick one up, there's a link down below. All right, let's get back to uh, the subject. So the first thing that you want is choose your bag. And what I've got here, it's just, it's fairly nondescript, but high quality. Uh, you don't want it to be looking all tactical, you know, multi-cam, crap like that. Unless, of course, you plan on sneaking around in the woods, all right? If, if that's what you're doing, hey, that's what you're doing. But this is, you know, if you can get, get some use on it, it doesn't look brand new, it doesn't look shiny. Uh, this is not the time to use your Gucci bags, right? This is, you know, something there's no, you know, if you have like a, uh, a name brand, uh, you can pull the logo off and then no one knows what you got. It, it's a little less obvious, okay? So a good quality bag to start with. What makes a good bag? Well, you look for good fasteners, the straps need to be good, and zippers. You don't want a zipper blowing out on you, okay? Most of your, uh, your uh, oh, Mountain Hardware and North Face and those guys, they make good stuff. There's plenty of good companies out there shop around, buy something that uh, that makes sense for you. Now for me, this size was good, okay? This is not huge, but it's not small. It's got enough room in there uh, to accommodate everything that I'm gonna have. And again, this is minimalist, right? We don't wanna you know, pack the you know, kitchen sink, okay? But one of the basic things that we're gonna need is water, okay, comms, and some food. Okay, uh, med medical stuff and uh, and abilities to uh, to see at night and light things on fire. You know, all these things. You, you, if you approach it from the aspect of what am I going to need to do, all right? And that's going to be different in your environment than my environment. This one's for mine. Okay, so we start off with the bag. And the next most important thing is going to be water. It gets hot down here in Southern California and you need to stay hydrated. So you're going to find yourself, uh, smart water works really good. Uh, it's got the, the container is fairly robust. Uh, you could refill this uh, if you had to. Now these smaller bottles, they're thinner plastic and they just hold less. I don't know. They're just, you can't quite compact this much water into this size. Water is the size it is, right? These now, once you use this, you can crunch it all down and make it a little bit smaller in your pack. But honestly, you know, this is a good way to uh, to store your water. This is also a little less robust, so if you drop your pack, you know, fall down a hill or something, um, this may break, all right? Uh, fairly robust, this is better. Now, if you wanna go reusable, Nalgene makes some awesome, you know, these things are tough as nails. They got all kind of uh, stuff that goes along with them. This one you can drink, you can, you know, fill it with, you know, pull this off to, to fill it up. Now, if you're going to carry something like this, you're going to put your own water in it, all right? When you run out of water and you find some water, now you're going to have to refill. Now, you can probably refill this one and this one. These will be a little more difficult, but in a pinch, you could probably do it. Now, when you do that, if you've got water from an unknown source, okay, I'm not talking, you know, with big chunks of crap floating around in it, but if you've got a, you know, clear water, uh, you can't see microbes, right? You get some clear water, uh, you need some water purification tablets. Follow the instructions on the, uh, on the bag, you drop them in, 
let it sit. Again, follow the instructions. Now, the problem with this stuff here is it tastes uh, medicinal. It's nasty. And if you've got uh, small kids with you or you know someone who you know, is taste sensitive, you want to make sure that they're going to drink you know the proper amount of water. So uh, you know, and if you're going to do that, you can add these little vitamin C packs. Got a little bit of flavor in there. That'll help you know work that. And you're getting vitamin C. It's good for you. This is Drip Drop. It's a hydration uh, uh, beverage powder. Got some flavors in it. Helps you soak up the water better. You know, my wife even has this uh, AG1 stuff. You know, she's really into the, the green side of things. So uh, uh, it's made in New Zealand. It's got you know good stuff in it. Uh, and it's not gonna be quite as sweet as other stuff, but you know, anything to give that, that flavor, mask the flavor of, uh, of this purification tablets because they can get pretty nasty. Now, how much water you wanna bring? Well, I'm gonna bring a couple of these at least, and it's all gonna depend on what you're doing, okay, and where you're at. If you're in the Mojave Desert, you might wanna bring some more. Just saying. Okay, so we got water, we got the bag, we move on. Uh, comms is a big thing. You know, everybody's got their cell phone, everyone has an, in, one in their pocket, but they run out of batteries fairly quickly. So it's a good idea to have yeah, you know, there's a bunch of these on the market now. Plug this in, make sure it, it, it has a charge on it. And a lot of these will charge your, your phone, you know, a number of times. So you want to, you know, keep your comms up. If there's still comms, you want to be able to make a call and get connected with, uh, you know, your family rescue, you know, play out the scenario in your head that, you know, you're going to have to deal with. Monitoring your comms is good. Making sure you have ba batteries for that is good as well. You also want to have spare batteries for any lights that you're carrying because you want to be able to see at night, okay? Be able to signal or just make your way through darkened streets or, or darkened houses during the day. You know, all depends on your situation. Lights are small and I always carry a light with me all the time. You know, I've got, you know, this one in my back pocket right now. This one's, a, I believe, a Surefire. Yeah, oh, no, it's a Streamlight wedge, okay? This one, uh, the battery goes in, the, uh, it, 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 it's a plug-in, so I'll recharge it and we're good. So I always have a light on me. That's just a thing, because you know, as my eyes start getting worse, uh, you know, I can't read things in the dark so well, so now I bring a light with me wherever I go. Now, moving on, you want to make sure you've got enough energy and your blood sugar's up. All right, so in order to do that, you got to bring some chow along with you. Obviously, you know, you're not bringing the, you know, seven course meal or anything like that. And don't expect survival food to be gourmet. It can be decent, but, you know, it is what it is. It's, you know, basically going to be dehydrated. You know, this is the old standby MREs. Uh, they say they last five years. Um, I've had them 10 years old. I'm not saying you should try that, but, you know, your mileage may vary. Now, on the civilian side, there's other options. This nutrient survival company that makes some pretty good stuff. It's packed full of nutrients. It's basically dehydrated. You add hot water to it, let it sit for a bit, and then uh, chow down. I've tried a couple of them. It's decent, and again, if you've got kids or you know somebody who's you know doesn't like to eat that stuff, you'll be able to get them to eat this. It's, it's, it's decent, decent chow. Now you can also go with, you know, the old standby, throw some beef jerky in there, get you good protein, um, you know, just stuff to keep you going. And again, we're not going on a picnic here. Uh, this is, you know, I've got to hike over to someplace and I need to, you know, keep my energy level up so I can, I can focus and, uh, and keep things going. That's helpful where water is a necessity. Okay, now, the next thing is gonna be warmies, okay? Environmental protection. What I tend to do is I'll take a stuff sack, a little compression sack, and I mean, I always have this outer layer. This is just a little lightweight. Just a little pullover. That's waterproof, okay? Here in Southern California, that's gonna get me through just about every scenario. I've used it countless times, okay? Now, if you find yourself, uh, if it's a little colder than that, and I wanna stay warmer, which 
you'll want to do. Hypothermia is real. You want to have, this is just a puff jacket. You have standard, I mean, this isn't North Face. Just about anything will work. This is to keep you warm, okay? This is to keep you dry. In here, you also have a watch cap, a beanie, something. A wool cap on your head. Uh, they say 85% of your heat goes through your chimney, right? So you cap it off with one of these. Rarely will you find me not having this in my bag, okay? These are my two big ones. And then this, puff jackets, they, they collapse down really good. So they're, they're good for the space that we're talking about. And then it's always good to have some set of gloves. These are uh, mechanics gloves, I believe. Not serious, just, you know, they'll keep you, uh, there's a little bit of environmental protection there, but it's also, if you've got to, you know, change a tire or, you know, get in and do something, it's going to protect your hands. Uh, you chop up your hands and you, life's going to get really rough. Okay, so having a, a decent set of gloves uh, is always a good idea. All right, so crush all this stuff down. Shove it in this compression sack and press all the air out of it. Pull her up. Connect, and now you got a, a decent little package. Shoves in, goes in the bottom of your backpack, and now you, you just got your, your, your basic, you know, thermal protection. And I talked about chopping up your hands. Well, you're gonna get cut, little cuts and things like that. You wanna be able to deal with them. So you, you know, we're gonna have the, of course you always have your, your, your blowout kit, your first aid kit, and you've got tourniquets and life-saving stuff goes into something like this, okay? And again, I'm not gonna open this up and show you what's in it because I want you to figure out you know, what you need and be able to use it. You've got to practice this because the first time you use this, you know, it shouldn't be when you're actually trying to save somebody's life, okay? Or your own. So, well, but that's for your, your life-threatening stuff, stopping the bleed and things like that. You get little nicks and dings on your hands and on your arms, you know, your feet. You probably should have something to, to take care of that, okay? Just, you know, band-aids. This is too much. Okay, I'm not going to carry this much with me, all right? But what I can do is get a old Ziploc bag, throw a couple. I already have tape. I'm going to have tape in another part of my kit, so I don't need extra medical tape. Uh, but I'm going to have some, some Band-Aids, some little Neosporin, some, you know, maybe alcohol swabs, something like that, so you can keep yourself uh, from getting little infected nicks and dings on you. The other things I'm going to put in this med bag Back in my military career, we had a sleeve bag, and I would always have just a little Ziploc bag and would have uh, some MRE toilet paper, some MRE matches, some Motrin in case something hurt, some rip fuel at the time or something that would, you know, little, you know keep you awake. I, mean, I never use that stuff to work out, but, uh, you know, it gets your heart rate up and, and keeps you from falling asleep. And the last thing was a little bit of Imodium. And Imodium will, uh, well, been overseas, you know, never trust a fart overseas, right? So uh, if you got a crap, oh my God, if you got diarrhea, it's like the worst thing ever, right? Uh, you, it just makes your day absolutely horrible. So a little Imodium, plugs you right up, good to go, all right? So that's just a you know, quick little, you know, it doesn't take much. Uh, if you've got allergies, throw some allergy pills in here. Again, you know, you're gonna customize this for you, okay? Moving along, a multi-tool, always good to have. You know, there's a bunch of different brands out there. Um, this one's Leatherman, you know, I've got Gerber's and uh, Sogs and some other stuff. Pick a good quality one, leave it in your stuff, make sure it's, uh, you know, doesn't rust clothes because you haven't used it in a long time. You know, maintain your gear. Fasteners, you want to keep things, you know, Together, you're gonna have to, you know, rubber bands are great to bunch things up. 550 cord. Now, take a little 550 cord. You can get a couple of different lengths, you know, throw a few of these, you know, together. It's real simple. Just, you know, you do the roll, wrap this up, run this through, make a little eye right here. And you can shove this in. 
like that. Tighten her down and now it stays together and you can pull it out and do what you gotta do. Now, how many of these are you gonna bring? I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna bring a couple. You know, you can get crazy. <sighs> this is probably too much, but you know, if you wanna go be Swiss Family Robinson and go swing from the trees, you know, game on. You know, you're, you're gonna have to figure out what you need. All right. Now, other fasteners, we got tape. A couple different types of tape. This is a little, little roll of riggers tape. It doesn't take much space. It doesn't weigh very much. Electrician's tape. One of my favorite ways to do this is you take some of that riggers tape and you wrap it around something. You can wrap around Nalgene bottles and have a fair amount. That's about mm, two and a half, three feet of tape just on my lighter. You know, it weighs nothing and it's all gonna go in the bag. Now, the bag. Oh, also you want a, uh, Sharpies are always good to have, man. They write on everything. If you gotta make notes or uh, let somebody know something, you can leave them a note. Also, if you, if you apply the tourniquet, you wanna like write on their forehead, big T and uh, you know, the time that you uh, put the tourniquet on. Little things like that. But so all, all this little stuff here, throw that in a Ziploc bag, goes right in. Okay. Now you're also gonna wanna have light navigating a good old nav, get, nav light, you know, this is just a little headlamp. Uh, who makes this one? A Petzl. Yeah, there you go, Petzl. <laughs> so a little mini Petzl on here. Uh, it's, it's really bright for the size, lightweight, no problem throwing in a pocket, you don't even know it's there. Now, you've got flashlights like this. You want to carry them with slightly out of battery, right? So that if you press the, uh, the button, you're not gonna wear your battery down because it's gonna be shoved in, your, in a backpack someplace. It might get compressed. Uh, they heat up, number one, but they also you won't have uh, any battery left when you pull it out. You wanna conserve your battery. And again, you're gonna keep, you're gonna keep uh, spare batteries for this stuff. And also, chem lights are good. You, know, you can buy these any camping store. Uh, they work really well, different colors. Chem lights will basically, they'll burn bright for 12 hours or so. So that cycle of darkness, you can come back and find it. Um, so just a good thing, they weigh nothing, you know, and they don't cost very much. I would have, you know, more than a few of these uh, in your bag. Now we're talking about navigating. If you're gonna be out in the woods and you're worried about that, then you wanna have your topographical map and your Silver Ranger and all that. I'm not bringing this. Uh, I've always got a little silver compass with me on my wrist. It's gonna tell me cardinal directions and that's pretty much all I'm gonna to need to know, all right? I'm familiar enough with this area. And even if, if, if I need to navigate my way downtown someplace, uh, this, I know some of you youngsters out there, oh, what the hell is that? Well, this is what we used to call a map, okay? It requires no batteries, all right? So having this with you, everything else goes you know, hell in a handbasket, you at least can navigate if you know how to use a, a map. Of course, there's no little moving cursor telling you exactly where you are. Now, you're gonna have to figure that one out, okay? Map reading's another class, so we're, we'll do a different video on that one. But just a basic, uh, you know, paper map. This one's laminated, so it's not gonna, you know, if it gets wet, you know, it's not gonna deteriorate. So that'll get you water, food, medical stuff and possibles, all, you know, all stuff really, really light, really the minimalist is what we're looking for here, okay? Being able to light your way in the di dark and being able to communicate. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about is protection. Now, I'm always gonna be armed, okay? So I'm not gonna have that. I don't necessarily need that in this kit because I already have one in my pocket, all right? Now, this can easily go in there. You're always gonna wanna have a knife. Knives are always good to have, you know, you know why. Having a, uh, a low profile firearm is going to be your best protection. Okay. Again, I'm going to have one in my pocket already. Uh, if I feel that the, that the threat level is increased, I'm going to go with a bigger gun, you know? So I'm going to have something like this uh, on me or maybe even in the bag. Don't know. Again, we're just pulling this out in this situation. Now, in that higher threat, where you wanna be able to have a little more protection, we can go into uh, like 
This is an AR pistol, some 300 blackout. So it folds up to a nice compact size. You want a shorter magazine in there so it'll fit in that compact space. Okay, uh, again, just shove in the, in, into that bag. And then you're gonna wanna be able to feed it. Having it's a real simple chest rig. You got your, your spare mags in here. I uh, got some spare mags for your Glock as well. This folds up. It's a nice, you know, compact piece of kit. It's not a full on, uh, you know, chest rig or anything like that. You know, you're not, not worried about plate carrier here. You just wanna carry this. Now, underneath uh, that jacket, this disappears. Okay, you, you know, you're just gonna look like you're a little, you know, chunkier than you are. But we're not worried about that right now. We're trying to stay, we wanna be that gray man. You don't wanna attract attention to yourself. You're just a dude who's walking someplace. You know, you, you look like you've got something more to you. That could be a challenge to, you know, certain folks or, you know, they'll consider you a combatant or a, a target. We don't wanna be a target. We just wanna get through there and get home, okay? so. That would be uh, your highest level of protection that you're gonna need. I live in Southern California. I'm not gonna need a whole lot of warmies or like that. I, I'm not planning on having just something for any particular, uh, any uh, possible uh, contingency. If you live in Minnesota or up in Alaska or someplace, uh, you know, you may wanna have a pair of these. I live in San Diego. I don't need these. Okay, so don't put too much stuff in your bag. You wanna have that bag, you don't wanna be have it stuffed either. You wanna have a little bit of room in there so you can adjust things as you need. And then if you live someplace that has you know, more than two seasons, you know, spring being one of them and summer being the other, then you're gonna want more stuff. You're gonna have to change every season, figure out what that season means, and you're gonna have to adjust your uh, your contents, you know, as you see fit. So one thing I haven't addressed here that's been sitting on the table is this. Uh, this is basically a breaching tool, all right? That's a lightweight breacher, but you can use it for all kinds of things. Uh, you know, digging holes, prying things open, whatever you gotta do, and in a pinch, you know, I mean, it's a good conversation starter or conversation stopper. But it's, it's not a weapon, it's not gonna be considered a weapon, there's no blade on it. Uh, you can have this concealed in that backpack and you know, you'll be you know, safe in the, uh, within, and within the law uh, for the most part. Uh, but it, it's, it's option, you know, it's not the lightest thing in the world, but it's worth its weight to carry, I think. So that's just a, a quick, like down and dirty on you know what your bolt bag can look like. Your mileage may vary. You're gonna have to figure out exactly what you need. This was just some things to get your get your mind thinking, and uh, you know figure out what you uh, carry in your backpack. And as always, if you like this content, like, subscribe, leave me some comments.